Hi, Prof Joel Pearson here for Future Minds Lab. I'm a professor at the University of New South Wales in Sydney, Australia, but I get around a bit. I travel all over the place, so I could be in your neck of the woods. I'm gonna talk a little bit about aphantasia and can we cure it? But curing it, yeah, again, suggests there's something wrong with it. It's, some, it's a problem, we, it's not. Almost every day someone emails and reaches out and asks the question, can you give me imagery? I wanna just tell you what we know and what we don't know. Can we give people imagery who have aphantasia? We did a study a while back uh, where we had people train on mental imagery for one hour each day for five days. And we didn't see any improvement in their mental imagery. We did see improvement in what's called uh, metacognition. In other words, our objective measures of imagery and their subjective sensation of the imagery came closer together. In another study, we tried direct current stimulation, which is like running a, a very weak current off a little battery through people's skull and through their brain. It feels a little tingly and itchy on the scalp, um, but not a big deal. And we found that we could up or down regulate imagery strength. These weren't massive effects, but they were clearly significant. They weren't long lasting. What I think we could do is combine a training regime plus this brain stimulation thing to potentially drive longer lasting changes in imagery strength. So that same paper provided good evidence that cortical excitability, just how active the neurons are in the back of your head, um, was a large contributor to overall imagery strength. Now importantly, we didn't run that study on people with aphantasia. People in that study had some level of imagery already. So the obvious question is, if you don't have any imagery and we're telling you to practice imagery, how do you know what to practice, right? If you've never spoken a different language, let's say it's Chinese, and I say, just go and practice that, first you've got to learn what the language is before you can just practice it. Some newer stuff coming out on psychedelics. So psychedelics as a treatment for mental health is now a big deal. And there are a couple of interesting, really interesting cases showing that people who have gone through a psychedelic study came out the other end with mental imagery. And they're saying they didn't have imagery before they went into the study. But it's only sort of two or three people at this stage and it was retrospective, which just means they no one measured their imagery beforehand. So they're really comparing their memory of how they remembered imagery beforehand with their imagery afterwards. But there's something promising there. We know that psychedelics does all kinds of cool stuff to neural plasticity. So how your brain is dynamic and plastic and changes. So it may in fact cause your brain to rewire slightly, giving you some imagery ability. Again, we don't know much about this at all. Just like I said, a couple of case studies. I'd be remiss if I didn't mention the potential dangers in all of this. We know that strong imagery is a driver behind anxiety. PTSD. We know that people who have schizophrenia, for example, have very strong, very vivid imagery. We know that people who have Parkinson's and visual hallucinations have very strong mental imagery. So there's this whole side that mental imagery and strong mental imagery is associated with neurological uh, and mental health challenges. So we need to keep that in mind. So here's a scenario. Let's say you've never had imagery. We run the study and then bang, in a week or two, you have strong imagery, but you don't have the experience in controlling that, right? You have these images popping into your head at random times. Maybe it stops you getting to sleep at night, or maybe it becomes more like PTSD where there are images of nasty things, of traumatic experiences or memories in your life, and it becomes really problematic. And we can't switch the imagery off. So where do we stand then? So we don't know if this is the case yet. Again, we need to run the studies, but we have to run them very carefully because we don't want to be in a situation where we've given a bunch of people imagery and they regret it and we regret it and we can't switch it off. I also wanted to mention imagery streaming. Now, if you've searched this on YouTube, you would have seen a lot of videos of people talking about imagery streaming and people claiming they get imagery through doing this imagery streaming process. We haven't done the science for that yet. We don't know if they're getting imagery. Um, they may just be adjusting their metacognition of imagery. In other words, their imagery doesn't change. It's just their awareness of what they already have changes. Again, we don't know. It's an interesting uh, topic. We want to study more. And I shout out to the scientists watching this. We need to do more studies in this. We need to do them carefully and of course, scientifically. Can we give you imagery if you don't have it? Probably. Do we want to? 
maybe. So that's a wrap for today. I hope that was interesting. Don't rush out and try and give yourself imagery uh, just yet. Think deeply about it. Um, if you like this video, yeah, subscribe, hit the like button, the algorithms love it. Um, and yeah, follow us for more updates on aphantasia, mental imagery, and other topics about the human mind.